Recursion is the process of calling a method within itself. One of the hardest parts about learning a recursion is recognizing when and how a recursion should be implemented. The basic idea is that you want to find patterns, a way that you can break your problem down into smaller problems that you can then use your procedure to try to solve. If done correctly, these subproblems can also be broken down further until we reach what is called a base case. The base case is the simplest possible case when the problem has been broken down as much as possible. The base case will be directly solvable and will allow us to make progress towards our previous problems. For example, this is a Sierpinski triangle, something I'm sure you've seen at some point. This works very well with recursion as it can be broken into smaller components. You'll notice that this triangle is made up of three similar triangles. If we zoom in on one of these triangles, we again have a triangle composed of three similar triangles. However, with a true Sierpinski triangle, we have the issue that no matter how far you zoom in, there will always be three more triangles. This means that unless we were to tell it when to stop, we would never be able to break this triangle down far enough to have a base case. Instead, let's take a look at a problem that is easier to solve. In Java, there is a function in the math class called POW that takes two numbers, x and y, and returns the value of x to the power of y. In other words, it simply allows us to do exponentiation. We are going to implement our own version of this method using recursion. Java's version actually allows you to provide a double for the exponent. However, for ease of demonstration, we are going to limit the loud exponent to input to non-negative integers. So let's take a look at our problem and determine just how it can be broken down into subproblems. We want the user to provide double x and integer y. Just as an example, let's say they give us 6 and 4. So we want to compute 6 to the 4th. 6 to the 4th is the same thing as 6 times 6 times 6 times 6, which, when combining the last three numbers, is the same as 6 times 6 cubed. So now we've broken it into smaller problems and made progress towards our base case. You want to make sure that you are always progressing towards your base case. Otherwise, you may never reach it, and the recursion will continue until the computer runs out of memory. Now that we've broken it down once, we are still left with an exponent that we don't know the value of. So we can call our procedure again on 6 cubed, which will break this down into 6 times 6 squared. This will progress until we need to deal with 6 to the 0. This is our base case. No matter what the value of x is, x to the power of 0 will always be equal to 1. Because of this, we can return the value of 1. The previous call will now have a value for 6 to the 0, so it will multiply this by 6, returning the number 6. This is again multiplied by 6 and returned. We will work our way back through all of the previous recursive calls until we have our final answer. This was an example of linear recursion, because at each step, only one recursive call was made. Here I have a flowchart to help visualize the behavior of this function. You'll notice that at each recursive call, we break off and only return to it again after we have a solution to our subproblem. We will continue to follow the flowchart as it branches off to the right at each method call until we reach our base case, at which point we will return to where we started. This is how most linear recursive solutions work. However, you will run into some that are far more complex. Recursion can be difficult to grasp at first, but with time and practice it will become a very useful tool.